Co. And our next speaker, I think Rob is ready in the wings now uh, to join us. Hey, Rob, how are you going? I'm doing well. So great to be here in Paris today. I've, <laughs> it looks a lot like uh, my room here in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, fantastic. You're ready to go from service mesh to service mesh. So great. I'll let you take it away. Sounds great. I'm so great to so glad to be able to talk to you about service mesh to, today. Um, a lot of times when you start into this process, you have this big ball of mud, this big mess. And let's talk about how we can get that into a service mesh. And maybe, does that make sense? Here's the part where I tell you, I am definitely going to post the slides of my site tonight. <laughs> I've been that person chasing the speaker. It's never worked out for me either. So the slides are online right now. Let's head off to robrich.org. Robrich.org, click on presentations. Here is service mesh to service mesh. The slides are online right now. Feel free to grab them, uh, download them, heckle me about the things that I haven't said yet. We're going to have a lot of fun today talking about service mesh. While we're here, we can click on about me and learn some of the things that I've done recently. I'm a Cyril developer advocate. I'm a Microsoft MVP, Docker captain, and friend of Redgate. AZ Give Camp is really fun. AZ Give Camp brings volunteer developers together with charities to build free software. We start building software Friday after work, Sunday afternoon, we deliver completed software to the charities. Sleep is optional, caffeine provided. If you're in Phoenix, come join us for the next AZ Give Camp. Or if you'd like a Give Camp here in Paris or where you're connecting from, hit me up on email or Twitter and let's get a Give Camp in your neighborhood too. Some of the other things that I've done, uh, I do a lot with Docker training and consulting. If you have that need, let's chat. And one of the things that I particularly enjoy, I replied to a .NET Rocks podcast episode. They read my comments on the air and they sent me a mug. Woohoo! So there's my claim to fame, my .NET Rocks mug. So let's dig into service mesh to service mesh. Do you remember when you got to that point where you could go beyond your town? Do you remember when you got to that age where you might have driven between places or gotten to ride the train to get it to another country or another city. You know how freeing it was to see your world expand in that way? Well, let's imagine that we're driving here on this really empty freeway. It's really fun. We get to drive really fast. We can go wherever we need to go. That is amazing. Well, in time, this empty road might get kind of full. We've got lots of traffic here, and <laughs> I start looking at this picture, and I'm like, okay, so if this car goes here, and how do we get out of this traffic jam? Well, we can do this. Let's put a traffic cop right at the edge of town, and if anyone is speeding through town, the traffic cop can, cop can stop them and can ensure that traffic is flowing uniformly throughout our town. Now, that's okay, but we're not getting to where we need to go as efficiently and expediently as we want to, we're optimizing for uniformity. Now, really what we want is a system like this, where the cars can communicate with each other and we can prioritize traffic. Um, emergency vehicles, people who want to drive really fast can drive in this lane. And people who want to take more of a leisurely approach or you know, on a Sunday drive can drive in this lane. And we can prioritize the traffic. The cars can communicate together. We can create this mechanism where traffic can flow as efficiently and effectively as possible. Now, this is what we're going for, and we'll see a similar analogy as we start talking about service mesh. Service mesh is that mechanism for being able to secure our Kubernetes clusters to be able to get at that next level of security. We're going to see demos of both Linkerd and Istio today, and we're going to take a look at best practices associated with service mesh. Service mesh. It manages network traffic between services in a graceful and scalable way. Basically, a service mesh is the answer to, how do I observe, control, and secure the traffic between my microservices? As we look at that traffic, observe, we want to be able to see the traffic flowing through our service, through our Kubernetes cluster. Now, if we can observe the traffic, we can start to create policies that control this traffic. Let's create mechanisms that say, this service can connect to this one, and this service cannot connect to that one. Now, once we've got to observe control, we can secure. We can create some mutual TLS connections between our services. And given this mutual TLS connection, we can now route our traffic securely so that even within our cluster, prying eyes aren't able to see our traffic. Perfect. Observe, control, and secure. Let's get there. How did we get here? 
Well, we started with monoliths. Monoliths were great. We could deploy all of our pieces together in one piece. And now, whenever we're ready, we deployed the entire app into one assembly, and we were able to deploy that into our web app, uh, into our web application server. Now, that was great, but in our web application server, it was difficult to scale. We had to scale all of the pieces together. So we moved towards microservices. Now, in a microservices approach, we can replace different pieces really easily. But here in a microservices approach, now our internal methods have IP addresses. In a monolith, our internal methods were just memory addresses inside of our assemblies. In microservices, our my, each microservice may be an internal or an external method, and it has an IP address within our cluster. So how do we secure that content within our cluster? As we talk about service mesh, we're going to talk about both north-south traffic and east-west traffic. North-south traffic is traffic flowing into or out of our cluster. East-west traffic is traffic flowing between microservices within our cluster. And the cool part, a service mesh can secure both, both north-south traffic and east-west traffic flowing between our services. How did we get here? What came before us? As we move from monolith towards microservices, we got an API gateway. Now, an API gateway is great at being that traffic cop at the edge of town. We are opting for uniformity here. The API gateway can validate that our traffic is flowing as we expect. It can validate that you're not calling the API too frequently, but it is only a fence around our cluster. How about the traffic flowing between microservices within our cluster? The API gateway has no visibility into that. It is only the traffic cop at the edge of town. So in this diagram, we can see that we're breaking one of those fundamental rules of microservices. We are calling a different microservices database. That's not OK. And well, the API gateway can't help us with that. API gateways are great at monetization and uh, traffic shaping from the edge, but they're not great at being able to validate the traffic moving between our cluster. So let's have a gateway to a service mesh. How does a service mesh work? Without a service mesh, if service A here on the left wants to call service B here on the right, it would just open a socket and connect to it. With the service mesh, the traffic flows a little bit differently. Service A will reach out to service A's sidecar proxy. As part of the service mesh, the sidecar proxy gets deployed along with the service into that same pod. So they have a network connection that is local to that pod. Now, the traffic between service A and the proxy will uh, flow there. The proxy will go check in with the control plane. If the control plane um, allows it, then the proxy will reach out to service B's proxy. Now, service B's proxy will check in with the control plane again. Am I allowed to accept traffic from service A? And if so, it will forward it on to service B. Now, the beautiful thing here is that process of connecting proxy A to proxy B is controlled by the service mesh. We can create policies that allow us to allow or deny that traffic. And because we have these proxies forwarding all of the traffic, we can create TLS connections that are secured through a trust chain back to our control plane or perhaps to our PKI infrastructure. Now, as we have that um, mutual TLS connection, we have it between the proxies. Now, local in our pods, that traffic from our service to the proxy may not be secured, but it's also local to the pod. And around that pod service boundary is our sidecar proxy. So we've been able to implement mutual TLS without changing the code in each of our services. Service A reaches out to the sidecar proxy, the proxy checks in with the control plane, and uh, the proxy then connects to service B. The service B connects, uh, checks in with the control plane, and finally forwards that request onto service B's uh, sidecar, service B's service. Now, maybe service A is an ingress controller, or maybe service B is an egress controller. We can still do north-south traffic in the same way that in this example, we're doing east-west traffic. So we're able to observe, control, and secure the traffic flowing through our Kubernetes cluster. Excellent. Now, it's not just this matter. Let's level up through the various things that we can do with the service mesh. Now, as we start, it's more than just a proxy. We can use, uh, we can use this ability to observe to get a network topology diagram. Now, the beautiful thing, this is not what the developer thought they were going to build, but rather the actual implementation of what they have here. We can take a look at service health. Are our services throwing uh, 404 or 500 errors? We can log that into our logs and understand how our system is behaving. As we level up again, we can do intelligent routing. 
perhaps we can do some A-B testing. We'll have two different versions of service B, and now we can validate which one helps us to uh, convert more customers or earn more revenue. And then let's lean into that by um, building that version of service B. Now we don't know which version is more performant or uh, more effective, and so let's do that experiment. We could also create a beta channel. Let's release new features to early customers who will help us to validate those features and uh, complete the development. And once it's good enough, then we'll release it to everyone else who may be less tolerant to change. We could also create circuit breakers. Now, the cool thing about a circuit breaker, if service B is having difficulty, it may topple over. Now, of course, service A and all the other services are going to retry the connection, presuming it's a transient network failure. As soon as service B starts back up, it's going to get flooded with these requests and immediately topple over again. Let's trip the circuit breaker. Now, the circuit breaker will tell us will tell all of the services trying to call into this service that it is unavailable and just fail the request straight away. Unlike the service breaker in your house, where you have to then go walk over to the circuit breaker board and turn it back on, this one will notice when service B is healthy again and start routing the traffic automatically. We have this intelligent routing because we're able to observe, control, and secure the traffic in our cluster. We also get interesting dashboards, and we'll get to dig into each of those. So we can see that with this service mesh, we're able to intelligently control the traffic both east-west and north-south. So in our example here, where the, the microservice was calling into the other database, with the service mesh, we can now control this behavior and say, nope, you can't connect to that host. You're not allowed to do so. As we, as we look at service meshes, we can look at uh, various service meshes. And ultimately, I'm not embedded in your organization to know which service mesh you should choose. But let's take a look at both Istio and Linkerd to take a, get a feel of how these service meshes work. We're going to focus not on the particular features, because they're evolving so quickly, but rather the methodologies. Linkerd focuses on uh, building everything in the box. They're a great contributor to the Rust open source network community, and they're really good at a really fast startup experience. Now, if you need to go beyond Linkerd's defaults, you may need to pull in external plugins. And so Linkerd gets to that point where you're starting to glom on other products. By comparison, Istio wants everything in the box. They grab the best of all open source projects, and you can now turn on and off flags to be able to enable different features. So with Linkerd, they focus on simplicity of startup. With Istio, they focus on completeness of solution. Now, ultimately, you may choose a different service mesh, but maybe if you are searching for Istio and Linkerd, that may help you find Kong or um, Open Service Mesh or Console or another service mesh that best matches your organization needs. But let's do a demo of both list, uh, Istio and Linkerd. Now, as we get started with Linkerd, let's do that one first. We start by downloading the um, uh, Istio, uh, the Linkerd uh, command line. We can say Linkerd version, and then we'll do a Linkerd check dash dash pre to validate that our cluster is ready to go. Once we've got that, we'll do a Linkerd install kubectl apply dash f, and that will get that content into our cluster. Now. Uh, we can do a Linkerd check to validate that that runs. And then once we've got our um, uh, dashboards, here's the dashboard solution, Linkerd viz install, pipe it to kubectl apply dash f again, and we'll do a Linkerd check to validate that we've done that. Now, for the sake of expediency with this demo, I already have that ready to go. So let's do a Linkerd check, and we'll validate that our uh, Linkerd service mesh is running. Yep, it looks like all of the pieces in Linkerd are running so far, and that's great. I love this because uh, as it spins up, if it's not ready yet, it'll actually wait. So now that we've got uh, Linkerd ready to go, let's do Linkerd viz dashboard. Now I focused on how Linkerd uh, has the really smooth startup experience and wants everything to be in the box. So here's the dashboard that they provide that allows us to be able to navigate through the various services. I'll grab this namespace. And the one exception to we build everything <laughs> is here's a link to the Grafana dashboard. So let's take a look at the Grafana dashboard for this particular service. And uh, my cluster hasn't been running long, but we can see some really great built-in dashboards to see how this service is behaving. Now, if we don't want to take the UI approach, we definitely can. Uh, we can do a similar type of experience here in the command line where we can say linkerd viz stat. 
I'm going to do it for the Linkerd viz namespace and take a look at the deployments. Now, we also have a Prometheus sync that we can pull out of Linkerd to be able to push that into perhaps Splunk or Elk or wherever you have your details. But this command line allows us to see similar details associated with our cluster. We can see that Linkerd is focused on that really smooth startup experience and everything in the box. Let's shut down Linkerd and flip over instead to Istio. Now here with Istio, our focus is having all of the services available um, in a similar start. Istio allows us to go grab the Istio command line. And then once we've got the command line, then we set that binary in our path. We choose a particular profile. In this case, the demo profile is great because it turns on everything. But in production, you'd probably want a leaner set of features. And then we set a particular um, label on a namespace. This label is what dictates which uh, namespaces, which pods we inject these sidecars into. So much like uh, uh, Linkerd has a similar mechanism of tagging our namespace. And so now that we've got that in place, let's launch this sample book application. Now this book application has an ingress, goes to a product page. There are three different review services, which definitely we wouldn't run all at the same time in production, but let's do an upgrade experience here today. Uh, version two and version three will reach out to the rating service and we'll also consume a product detail page. So here's that page. And if I refresh it right now, we're set to run all three services. So sometimes we'll get stars in red color. Sometimes we'll get stars in black color and sometimes we'll get no stars. Now I've got this set right now as uh, 33, 33, 33 across those various services, but let's do that upgrade experience. Let's take a look at um, version one. So I will switch over to um, version one, cube CTL apply dash F version one. And now all of our traffic will. So now if I refresh it, you'll notice that however many times I refresh it, I don't have any stars. Let's take a look at version two. Now with version two, I'm not really comfortable with version two yet. So let me send only a, um, that's not it. This is it. Let me only send 20% of my traffic to version two, and I'll still set 80% um, of my traffic to version one. So let's uh, cube CTL apply dash F that one. And now we can see that 20% um, of the time we will get stars in black color and 80% of the time we will get stars in, we'll get no stars. Okay, so it looks like that's working out well. Let's flip all of our traffic over to version two. And now we have only black bars. Now, once we've got all the traffic over to version two, we can spin down version one. Now let's get ready to look at version three. Now version three, I want to, um, I want to do a test. I want to say, let's, let, uh, let's create a beta channel. Um, users logged in, in this case, as JSON, will be able to view version three. Apply dash F there. Nope, that's not it. Um, let me copy this one. There we go. Cube CTL apply dash F there. So now I'm not authenticated and I refresh, you can see that I still have version two, but let's sign in and we'll take a look at version three. I'm gonna log in as JSON. J Jason. <laughs> and now that I'm logged in, now I see version three. I'll always see version three while I'm logged in. I'm going to log out and I'm back to version two. Okay. So version three worked out okay. I'm glad we got to use that beta channel. Now let's flip over exclusively to version three. And here at version three, we can see that now we always have the stars in red color. Now that's excellent to be able to navigate through these things with zero downtime. We can spin up the new pods, let them get healthy, then start to slowly migrate our traffic over. Once our traffic is on the new version, then we can um, then we can see the content. I'm going to flip back to the one that gives us traffic on each of the uh, kubectl apply dash f uh, equally across all of them. That'll help with our next demos. 
And so now we can see we're back to having equal traffic between all of them. Now, uh, Istio is focused on having all of the things in the box and configurable in interesting ways. So let's take a look at the dashboards that we have available with Istio. Now, I've chosen to install all of them. <laughs> kubectl, uh, nope, Istio CTL dashboard Prometheus. Now here in, uh, nope, Istio, spelling is hard, <laughs> Istio. Rob, if I can just interrupt you there. Um, I'm sorry, the, um, I think during the demo, you've accidentally hit your mute button. You're, you're muted. You've lost your sound. We can see the Istio control plane dashboard. Um, so people following along will have had a look. Um, but we can't hear your insights. Is my audio back? Thanks for grabbing now it me. Is. Great. I was... Thank you. There you are. Perfect. Okay. So Wonderful. we can see this dashboard that is built in and thanks for grabbing me and telling me I was muted. Um, there are a bunch of dashboards here inside of Istio and we don't have time to look at all of them, but there are lots and that's cool. Let's step out of Grafana and take a look at Jaeger. Um, Jaeger is great at being able to visualize content as it moves through our system. So let's take a look at our uh, product default and we can dig into one of them. And we can see that here's where our content came in and then it went to this request. Um, it did this one. So if we're taking a look at speed of our system, then this, system, this application is definitely not the concern. We can take a look at this request. Oh, it looks like reviews default was pretty slow. If we wanted to speed up our system, reviews default may be the place to look. It's nice to be able to look through our um, traces through our system and see which things call which pieces and how long it took. Jaeger is great for that. Let's switch over to the Kiali dashboard. And the Kiali dashboard is really elegant at being able to visualize our cluster. Once I'm authenticated, I'm going to flip over to the graph. I will pick my default namespace. I will go not to the last one minute, but to the last 30 minutes. And now we can see the graph of how our system was built. Now the product page calls out to the details page. The product page also calls out to this review service, which gets to pick which version it connects to. Now we connected to version one, two, and three. Two and three reached out to our rating service. Now, as you pull this dashboard up in Kiali, you may notice that, well, this isn't what the developer had in mind. Maybe we forgot and we hard coded the, uh, test version of details. So it's not actually reaching out to our details service the way we expected. Or perhaps we thought we flipped from version two to version three, but we didn't. This is great to be able to visualize exactly how our cluster is behaving, not how the developer thought our cluster was behaving. As we flip to the last one minute, we can now reload our page and we see that this is a live graph of the content happening in our cluster right now. Here's the uh, details, the product and it looks like in this case, it kept reaching to version one. This is a live dashboard of our cluster. And if we wait a minute, then it will jump back out. So let's stop our Kiali dashboard and Istio demo stop. Let's turn off our Let's come back to here. Now, it was great to be able to take a look at both Linkerd Istio and see how those two systems function differently. Now, Istio is great at having everything in the box and allow us to configure things, 
Linkerd focuses on that really elegant startup experience. As you wander through other service meshes, you might find other experiences. Now, as we look through this, we got to see this crawl, walk, run experience. In the crawl experience, yes, we get to observe, control, and secure, monitor, logging, service health. As we go from crawl to walk, we get this intelligent routing. We got to see how we could do A-B testing with Istio uh, between version one and version two. We got to see how we got to do a beta channel with um, version two and version three logged in as JSON. From walk to run, we get a network topology diagram. And this is amazing. This is what's actually happening in the system, not what we think is happening in the system. That is perfect. We can compare this to what the developer had in mind and know if we've built the system correctly. Now, a service mesh doesn't come without costs. On the left is a Kubernetes control plane and the Kubernetes worker nodes. We have various microservices associated with getting Kubernetes running. On the right, we have the service mesh. Now we have a control plane associated with the service mesh. We have the sidecar containers associated with the service mesh. So when you move from, uh, when you move upgrade to a service mesh, you will probably have double the number of containers running in your cluster. That is a non-trivial amount of compute cost. It's probably not double compute cost. It's maybe you know 1.3 or 1.6. Your Tomcat container is much heavier than the container doing all of the TLS negotiation, but you are going to have significantly more compute cost. This is a, necess a necessity with service mesh. So maybe okay. if you don't okay. need observe, control, secure, maybe you don't need a service mesh. Robert, observe, um, control, and secure. That's what we're Robert, looking for Robert. with a service mesh. Okay, it's fantastic. Thanks very much for um, the overview of the service mesh. We are right up on the time, however, so we do need to move on and give Ryan um, a chance to speak. So thanks for your um, uh, contact details here, and it was great to go over. There, there, there's a lot of information on your website as well, so people can get in touch that way. Wonderful Most definitely. Thanks for letting me join you here in Paris. It was a lot thanks. of fun to share service mesh with you. Cheers. Ciao.